hammock deposits in Ali Valley. Here we have a series of videos about Ali Valley. This valley is located in northern Pamir and have very unusual deposits. Very vast, huge and of unusual form. Past a lot of questions, but only recently we start discovering what are they. Listen to this video, just talk uh, briefly about these valleys, its geology, settings, why we have this problem with the geomorphology there. And I will take you through what we have, what the state of knowledge, what we learn, and why it's important for us. So in this first part, we just talk about the Ali Valley and these deposits in the post the main questions about these hummocks that we find there. First of all, we need to know what the Ali Valley represents. This valley is located mostly on the territory of modern Kyrgyzstan, of the south of Osh region. And this valley is very vast with the high mountain peaks to the south and to the north, with the highest peaks reaching 7,134 meters in the south. The north side of the Ali Mountains slopes down to the Fergana Valley. The south side is the trans Alai Range along the Tajikistan border with Lenin Peak at the top. So the border with Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan is just coming through the highest points of trans Alai or Zalai range. It's a very dry valley, glaciated with unusual morphology, rich pastures, and this valley was always important as a transportation route for the Eurasia. In the past, through the Ali Valley, the Park of a Silk Road was coming through. Geologically, this place is not very studied yet. There was a substantial studies done in the Soviet times and just a sparse studies done recently. To the east, further down, there is a low Tungmurum Pass and it's then more valley leading to the Irkishstan border crossing to China. And if you continue going to the west, from this pass, Irkishstan flows the Kizil Su River, which in a local language translated as Red River. Apparently for the colors, sometimes in the places, because of the red sands and seals, it have a very distinct red color. The Kizil Su flows through the north of the valley and through the Karamik Pass into the gorge into Tajikistan. Then it's changed the name into the Vakhsh River and it flows southwest into the Amudarya River. Amudarya, one of the main feeding rivers that flowing from northern Pamir. The valley is not very highly populated, estimated about 70,000 or so people there. Most people come there seasonally for the pastures. Many people live in this place for better jobs. In the general settings, the Ali Valley, a very northern range of the Pamir Mountains. So the Ali Valley is on the borders, not just geological, geographical, but also the borders between the people in the countries. When you get into the valley, you will be struck by the wall of Zala range. It's spreading for up to 150 kilometers from east to west. The mean elevation of this range about 3-4,000 meters above the sea level and with the high points going towards 6 and 7,000 meters and higher. The valley itself is spreading for 150 kilometers from east to west and mean elevation there it's about 2,250 meters sea level. However, when you are in the valley, you don't feel it as uh, bad there. It doesn't feel so strikingly high there. It's a little bit drier uh, air there, and the climate have more contrast. However, it's a very pleasant place to be. Because of this Zalai range uh, in the northern 
all the passages going towards the northern part of the Pamir, there's a lot of tourist uh, alpinist climbers coming to the area from all over the world to climb the famous Lenin Peak and other Pamir mountains and glaciers. Let's briefly talk about the geology here. The Dalai Range, the northernmost ridge of the actively uplifting Pamir origin in the mountains. Its formation started about 55 million years ago as a result of the collision between the Indian and Eurasian plates. So it's one of the big part of the Tibetan plateau system. The northward displacement of the Pamir block towards the Tanshine developed the valley from a formerly marine into a terrestrial basin during two stages we develop. So we have two stages of late Oligocene and from mid Miocene till the present. The big fold coming through the uh, south of the valley and it's very striking, you can even see it on the satellite images. And it's lying just at the foot of the Zala range. And we can trace it on the satellite but also on the ground. And that's big fold that accommodates the majority of the displacement and it's quite active. Only during the last hundred years uh, people recorded about five big earthquakes, uh, more than 6.5 in magnitude. The central part of the Zala range seems to be one of the biggest and that's where the highest accumulation of the snow present. So there's a lot of cirque type basins which accumulate the snow through the winter and then it doesn't have enough time to melt through the summer, which is hot but short in that area. Also at the night, it's, the temperatures go very low, especially in the high elevations, so the snow doesn't melt. As a result, there's numerous glaciers developed there all, all, all around. Dendric type uh, glaciers, kind of like a tree type of glaciers. And of course the Lenin Peak fern accumulation are considered to be the largest in the northern Pamir and a source of the famous biggest glaciers such as Korzhenevskova, Oktyabrsky, large Saukdara, Lenin itself, Common Glacier, Chindirzhinsky and others smallest glaciers. And this glacier has been uh, reported to be surge type glaciers. I'm not going to talk about here in detail about what does it mean. Uh, surge type glaciers is the glaciers that periodically move fast down the valley. So they're kind of collapsing down from the sitting area where they are and they um, basically like a waterfall or waterfall of the ice surging down, moving everything on the way and rocks and the ice and maybe even scorching sediment which in front of those glaciers and then they lay down for some time and melt down and then again and some time next surge happened. We don't know yet, uh, there's no solid evidence that suggesting that those surge types only related to the earthquake. So you have earthquake, mountain shakes, landslides happen or something happened and the glacier moved. No, many surge type um, behavior occurred or happened not related to earthquakes activity. However, there's a cases when the earthquake triggered the surge of the glacier. So people suggesting this type of the balance mode happening in those type of glaciers. So that's the way how they discharge rather than like a normal glaciers, <laughs> although it's hard to say what is a normal glaciers. A uh, typical alpine glacier, uh, we have different types of those and surge glacier is a little bit atypical because the way they behave. It's have importance to understanding for us the landscape in this valley, in the Ali Valley. Uh, and we'll talk about this later when we will in detail look at the deposits come from the glaciers and other sources and how they're different. This glacier descend into the Ali Valley and the accumulation zones, uh, cirques, and the cutting into the base of the range with short glacier trunks in the ablation zone. So most of these trunks actually lie in ablation zone, some of them have a sediment on top of them and they're melting drastically, of course, especially in the last decades. In the southern slope, longer valley glaciers occupy the long deep valleys, 
with a gentle transition from accumulation to ablation zones. So it depends on the slopes, also it's different. And this old glacier has been studied uh, back in 1871 from the first exposition into the Alai Valley by Russian uh, explorers. And a good chunk of studies been done in 1955 by Zabirov. He published even the detailed work on the Pamir glaciers. Since then, there was a studies done by Soviet Academy of Science and the Russian Academy of Science from 1991. In particular, people were interested in this search type of glaciers, how they behave. For example, several glaciers of the southern Zalai range searched during the period of 1972 till 1977. We even see it on satellite images. Now the two search advances have been reported of the Lenin Glacier itself. Now we know that, for example, the Lenin Glacier searched last time about 1945 and then it's been retreating, uh, it's been going up the valley, melting away, and it's moved uh, since then about 1.3 kilometer up the valley till 1965. And then we have little advanced search type again, uh, which was about 1.1 kilometer down the valley. So you can see that these glaciers surge down quite a lot by kilometer or so, and then they retreat during several decades, and then they surge back again. And that's one of the reasons of the type of deposits we're going to consider in the valley, how they formed. Let's look closely on the Google Earth maps, uh, where we located and what the geomorphology we can expect in that area. So you can see there's a big, large Tibetan plateau and northern eastern part here, uh, majority of Tajikistan, which is located in a little bit of Kyrgyzstan, just one range. It's the Pamir Mountains. Uh, you can see that they have uh, valleys quite dry, and not many snow there, uh, probably because of the lack of accumulation. Uh, it's cold there, however, not many precipitation are reaching so far through the mountain ranges, or not from the east, of course. So, um, northern and eastern, uh, these big ranges here will be the ones that we're interested in. In particular, this is the Zala range here. Ale Valley itself is quite dry, and you can see these high mountains with the surging glaciers. And that's what we talked about, dendrite type of glaciers. You can see they're like a trees, have a tributary smaller glaciers feeding one trunk, they're going down the valley. For example, there's a beautiful example of these glaciers here, here. They all have this kind of wavy type of um, look, uh, and that's one of the indication of this, when these waves get disturbed like that of surges, so we can say there was a civil surges, for example, on this trunk, not so obvious here. And this is the trunk of the glacier, so this is all ice under the rocks, which is hard to see, but it is there, and you can see there's some uh, super glacial lakes formed on the surface of it, when the glacier starts melting down, and you can see again the striking uh, lines, this is just uh, different satellite images, but this is striking lines of the of the glaciers, another surge when this uh, tributary glacier moved over that one. Yeah? I'm gonna clock the chunk that one. It's amazing geology, you can just study it from looking into the satellite images. Here, the actual termination of the ice. You can see this is all the ice here, and that's where it's, the glacier actually finished. And it's kind of still feeding from here. This uh, termini, the end of the glacier is here. Uh, used to be together in drawing going down the valley. And actually, uh, I think about 100 years ago, it was all joined at that stage. And we're interested in our Zalai range with a Lenin peak at the top, that one. And that's where the border is going through, through the very high ridge of Zalai. You can see the fault cutting through here, and you can see the Kuzilsu River flowing down the valley. And these non-glaciated uh, mountain ridges here, there's some cirques, but through the summers they don't have snow preserved. So there's no much glaciers left now. However, amazing geology nevertheless. So if you look in all this valley like that, maybe I move too fast, 
you can see that we have uh, this effluvial, glacier effluvial, so the glaciers from the ranges bringing the rivers, the streams material, bringing a lot of rocks washing out uh, through the fold here, that's where the open valley started. And in some places we start having these hummocks, it's not very obvious here, more obvious here, here, here. And they have numerous, numerous, numerous lakes on top of them. So when we are on the terrain, we can see, and this, this range, for example, here, and you see these hummocky deposits and some numerous lakes on it. And that's what I have interest. So if I a little bit flip uh, our map. So we're looking down now south and we're moving through the valley. So that's the border towards China. And they have amazing geologies there. And that's the uh, little bit narrow place and the Kuzil Su flowing through. And now collecting the waters from all these glaciers. One, two, three, four, and so on. And our Lenin glacier is located here. That's actually where the base uh, for the Lenin glacier is also uh, located. So if you're a climber, you probably, alpinist, you probably will go there and then you climb up on the peak. Here I have a little bit exaggeration of my uh, topography, but it's make it a little bit more pronounced for you. And we have all these deposits here. Uh, this one's been washed away by the rivers. And the next one here as well, we have um, next glacier here located in this valley. Congur Glacier, Common Glacier, Lenin Glacier with two tributaries and Kornivetskova, quite a bigger glacier, which is located here. That's what left of it, at least. That's the ice here, you can see. Still melting down. And further up, you move to this uh, two tributaries of this glacier. Sorry, maybe you're gonna feel sick of me moving around. <laughs> yeah. Kornivetskova glacier is amazing. It's half yeah, huge body and many tributaries glaciers moving one, two, three, four, so fast. And again, you can see this, that's when the, this trunk is floating in, pushing through. And we know there have been surges reported on this glacier through the history as well. So basically, Korzhnevetskova is the eastern part, eastern wall from the Lenin. And the main feeding zone for the Lenin is here, this cirque, and that cirque. And that's the famous peak, about 7,134 meters high. Coming back to Ari Valley, we can fly through as a bird or airplane and see the beautiful range and amazing deposits. So why are they so interesting? Why are they so striking for us? This is the ranges, the bedrock. So this is the actual mountains, the actual rocks underneath, covered with some of slope material, maybe some landslide or fluvial material. But these ones are soft material, they've been brought from the valley. And obviously you would say, oh, that's the glacier bring this um, material here. And I'm not gonna argue with you. However, we have a big, uh, here as well, we have a big questions about how they formed. We know the glaciers can form this type of material. However, there's a different mechanisms described we not uh, know for sure for 100% how it's formed. So is the glacier was sitting here like that and then just melt down? Uh, this very striking uniformly hummock formed, same here. Or is this material formed as a result of the surge of the glacier or both? It surge and then melt down? Or is there any other mechanism of how these uh, deposits formed? And even if they're just purely glacial, which I will prove you it's not always the truth, most of the time it will be probably the truth, but not always. What it tells us about not just settings geology in this area, but also about the climate. And that's why the many people study glaciers, because they want to understand what's happened with the climate in the past, what's going to happen in the future, how the glacier landforms react. So we people, we know what to do. Because if you go to this valley, it's not just a base camp here and a danger of some people who do tramping and tourism here. 
but there's also a lot of people located in these hills all over the summer for example with their animals mostly goats, sheep maybe some people have horses and they use it as a pasture lands this is the way they live there so what the danger um, posed if for example there was all big landslide that fall down in a matter of the minute second and a minute and destroy everything in its way or is there something about the glaciers which we should be scared of because we know there's a many catastrophic types of surges who can as well uh, not just destroy everything in the way but also kill some people and we know this uh, recent cases for example Kolka Karamdek uh, glacier in 2002 um, damaged the village and killed some people in the, in the valley and also a filming crew there as well so there's a many times uh, when it's posed the danger what going to happen with these glaciers in the future in the changing climate so that's the main uh, problem here it's also will help us to understand geology better of that area so there's a big transpamir fault coming through and when the big earthquake happened on this uh, fault we would expect catastrophic landsliding and how it's dangerous too luckily the main villages for example Saramagul uh, area Saramagul village and others located on the north of this valley however you can tell by the deposits the, the danger deposits can reach quite low and they might pose the problem for the transportation for the people so if you look closely on these linen deposits, you can see this distinct kind of two main lobes here. I will differentiate. And that one lobe will be related to this valley. This tributary smaller glacier here. And Korzhnevetsko, of course, here, big one. So here I can tell you straight away, there is something odd. Look at that deposits. There's something on top of that deposits which is even on the image you can see a little bit different texture a little bit different color uh, and it looks like it's been flowing on top of it so what is this you can see it here here and here there's a main river cutting through and this hill is quite big these ones if we even measure them and they can go up to 100 meters or even more and they're quite tall so when you walk through it's constantly up and down up and down and then when you go to this terrain you'll be surprised of very frequent uh, helix here. So of course they're located on top of previously deposited or together deposited material. And we need to look closely what is was first, why and how. And that's why we look closely in the next videos. We will talk about what we know about these hills, how these ones look like and how we can study them so they understand where they come from. So please stay with me, subscribe and share this video with anyone who might be interested and want to know more about our planet. And I'll see you in the next videos.